Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Drama Surgery Podcast. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Um, in this episode, I am not covering any one specific drama. This is going to be my usual watch list digest, which is where I talk about dramas I'm watching, dramas I want to watch, dramas that, you know, I might drop. And so yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, the very first drama that I am watching currently, um, only has two episodes left before the end, is the 2024 Korean drama, My Lovely Runner. I keep saying my and there's no my in that it's just lovely runner but i feel like i keep adding my to it but anyways yeah lovely runner is a drama starring bian Usok and kim Eun. bian Usok plays this star that ends up dead and so he's like most devoted fan in seoul played by kim Eun, has to go back in time and try and save him right through a bunch of like plot ways to find out that like bian Usok's character risonji actually loved him so all this while <laughs> and basically most likely died saving her life right um and so it's just her trying to unravel his death that takes up all 16 episodes of this drama which i'm fine with generally um but i mean it it does get a lot and i'll talk about it in a second but firstly i just want to say because i watched up to episode 14 and i can't i'll give this like a gosh i feel bad (laughs) um but i'll give like a seven out of 10 which which is not horrible but it's not the best it can be um mainly because i feel like uh the old time travel part the old rebirth part is overdone what i thought would happen when she first went back in time was that she would stay there and it was just through that one time travel that she would be able to change everything and so i thought she would be staying in her old life for the duration of the old drama i didn't know she would be like going back and forth going back and forth (laughs) so that took me a little out of the drama right she just kept going back way too often i feel like she wasn't patient enough in some scenarios like she just didn't give it time and she was just she seemed like she was forgetting a lot of things conveniently for plot (laughs) for plot um because there's no reason why she should be forgetting some elements that she should have remembered right that's kind of why i'm rating this a little lower than i would have liked um it's still very good i still love it um one of the most interesting part and the funniest part about this drama is the character of risonji he is 100 percent a boy that's in love right it's a little unbelievable because he's like six feet tall very handsome and it makes no sense that no other girl is like chasing after him right but for the sake of drama because you know obviously this was written by a woman <laughs> Like, you can tell men that are written by women, right? Like, same with, like, Queen of Tears. Like, Bekeonu's character is also probably written by a woman because ain't no way. (laughs) Even same for, like, his brother-in-law, right, in that drama. The one that the wife basically had had an affair with somebody else and was passing on, you know, that child as his. Even him, like, also, I had a sense of, like, I mean, I'll talk about Queen of Tears, like, later, probably in a different episode, <laughs> but, yeah, that was also probably written by a woman, because there's no way a normal person is okay with that, right? It just, you, you... <sighs> anyways, back to this, right? 100%, you can tell that Risanje is written by a woman, because I have never seen <laughs> more of a simp. Oh my god, when you talk about simping, there are levels to this shit, right? I will say Rishan J takes the cake. Like, I'm trying to think of other characters that are like sims for their girls. Let's say maybe the male lead in Strong Woman Do Bong Soon. He is also a simp, but I feel like Rishan J takes the cake of like simping. Like, he takes simping to a whole different level that it's it's so funny it's almost like too much but it's it's really good and it's it's very lovely in a way right like he's so devoted to her he's so he likes her so much i will say that i wish they had given us more depth to why he likes her in the sense that like yeah i get he likes her and he's like ugh, like he just loves her so much but like why it's very given that he loves her this much that he's willing to die for her. Right? I know some people are like that, that they just love hard. They have like a big heart to love that much. But I wish there was something else that explained why he loved her so much. Like to the level he did. It's very given that in the first life, she knew nothing about it. I would have preferred something other than the fact that he just saw her once with like a yellow umbrella and fell in love with her at first sight. That's cute and everything. But given that he's going to die for her, I wish there was more to it. Because I feel personally that it just seemed like his whole world or his existence was built for her. As opposed to being his own person that just happens to fall in love 
with her, right? And I don't know how to explain this better, but he seems like he was written solely to be the love interest, right? And that is why I am not as sold <laughs> on their love, right? It's cute and everything, and I love it, but I don't know. I just wish there was more. Um, and also to the point of like her going back and forth between walls. Again, I felt like they should have just left her at that one time travel like chance that she got and her trying to fix things in that one timeline right because again i don't know and this is an issue i have with like romance dramas like romance plots that are supposed to be purely romance will just insert a serial killer did I mention this fact? I think I mentioned this when I did my first impressions. Like I mentioned that they better not add like a serial killer element to this drama and they did. It's a problem. This is a pandemic at this point. Like it's an epidemic. I mean, like what is going on? Why is this necessary in all romance? Like this happened in Strong Woman Do Bong Soon as well. It happened in a bunch of other dramas that I mean, I just don't understand why is the thing. I don't understand why this serial killer is taking up all the time. Right, that's basically like everything that they are working or she's working, Imso's character is working towards fixing. And it's like, ugh, will he not just die already? Even like at episode 14 that I just finished, he's still around. (laughs) Like, how is he still around? They better wrap it up in episode 15 because I want episode 16 to be pure, beautiful, fluffy romance. Because if this old serial killer thing is hanging until like the last 10 minutes of this drama, I'm going to lose my mind. (laughs) like serial killers are not that many Uh uh-uh like they can't be that many of them (laughs) so yeah that's the one thing i would say that you know just uh, that's my gripe with this drama but overall i think it's a fantastic drama again i love love the love you know like i love watching (laughs) risonje be such a loser (laughs) for him so like i've never seen more of a simp in this world he's so pathetic (laughs) he's a groveler and i love it it's very well done they make you want to believe in their love right um i i do believe more in Imso's like love for him than i do his for her um because of the reasons i mentioned but regardless it's still very beautiful right and i love it so much but yeah that's the first drama i am currently watching then moving on to the second drama i am watching it is the 2024 korean drama the midnight romance in hagwon as of the time of this recording i have watched four of the 16 episodes it's from the same writer and director i think that brought us like one spring night and something in the rain and so if you know those dramas <laughs> this drama is super familiar to you in fact i'll say like 80 percent of the cast <laughs> is from those two dramas right that just came back and are taking on new roles here this drama stars jung real one as soye jin this instructor at this academy right so this is Agwon, this after school academy and then we have we had june as ijuno who is a former student that you know comes to work in this academy <sighs> this drama i would say first of all just gives me a lot of stress which is weird because nothing has really like happened yet right but i just know it's going to be angsty you know like if you've ever watched something in the rain or one spring night the romance is always an issue because it's just it's taboo in some ways right and it's the same here and i feel like this is going to be even worse because they used to be teacher and student and so like that's what i'm dreading and also why i would say i did not enjoy one spring night or something in the rain as much as i could have right because i just like i knew it was coming and i just couldn't like it was too much for me right um and i think this is gonna take the cake in that like i just don't know like this reminds me of melancholia right and that's the vibe i'm getting it's just that like melancholia could skip to the future right like it could skip time um or time skip whereas this this is this is the core of the story something you're gonna have to overcome and it's ah i am scared i mean the the good or like saving guess in this is that like when she taught him she was in college she wasn't like extremely grown or anything like she was in college was in high school so the age gap could be worse i guess right but still like i just know be an issue for his parents because his parents are already like can tell they are insufferable um in the few scenes that they are in because i mean they're all about prestige and everything and they would rather he walk and pretend to be like in that prestigious world given that i mean he's not making a lot of money will never make enough money to remain in seoul but they want that prestige to be able to say my son works for a big organization right um and he's like no i don't want that i want to make money for myself and be something right and so that's why he joins the academy 
a lot of people are shocked that like how is it possible that academies are making this much money the thing with like south korea i've realized is that like education and you know prestige status is very very important right if you want to live in seoul like if you if you don't care to live in seoul you want to live in like a rural city kind of thing now when i say rural i mean like not so because rural <laughs> Uh, or not so busan um it calls rural right then it doesn't really matter to you right you can probably do anything or be anything but if you want that prestige and everything you gotta go to a good school um you know one of the sky universities right and so ijuno manages to get into korea university right which is a k in sky right um and this is all because of soyajin and so she has that prestige of being able to get people like ijuno that comes from the bottom of his class into something like korea university and so basically they are just trying to capture as much students as they can to make more money for the academy and i mean it's a very precarious job i would think because i mean there's no way i mean and this is one thing i have like an issue with in this drama and i guess it's not the point of this drama right you're supposed to only focus on the academy but i would say it, it makes no sense that they are not acknowledging that there's no way there's no other things that matter when it comes to getting your kid into like a sky school right the drama sky castle kind of covers it and you see just how important other things are like i don't want to say the word bribe and everything but like you know mixing and networking with other people um you know being on like this high class level in life that will you know kind of help you guarantee your kid into one of these universities right um those things matter but they don't cover it here and they pretend almost like it doesn't exist which is not factual i would say like it doesn't it's not realistic those things actually matter and this this matters in any country anywhere it's like the u.s has like legacies and stuff like that they are even more open about it right we have legacies i don't think they have legacies in south korea maybe they do i'm not sure but this drama doesn't acknowledge any of that but anyways i assume it is while they are working together um while they are being a dream team that they're gonna fall in love because i can already see glances of it and i'm scared for them oh my god <laughs> i'm so scared for them right but still i love it it's it's good like there's something subtle about everything as it's happening it's not over the top there's something about we had you that <laughs> like i feel like you could have chemistry with like a cardboard you know like he's one of those like guys that just they have it and they bring it so yeah i am really enjoying this drama and honestly if you're not watching it i think you should check it out right because i heard it's not doing so well which is unfortunate but like i like it it's fine so yeah that is the second drama i am watching now moving on to the next drama i am watching is the 2024 korean drama boys be brave this is a bl drama and so like you know i'm gonna be there <laughs> right like you just know i'm gonna be there um this is a youth drama that is starring kim song hyun as kim jin who is the prickly closed off introverted owner of this house that jong ki so played by nam shian moves into jong ki so feels that he is able to do this because he knows that kim jin likes him and he's using that as the like reason to do this right which is factual kim jin does like him i don't know how he knows exactly i mean he, he kind of sources this out um but like it's true right the only issue is that <laughs> john gives up comes off as a player a lot of people have speculated that he might be on the spectrum is probably why he's the way he is he comes off as someone that like will go out anybody that asks right so he's not the kind of person that kim jinu wants to like basically kim jinu thinks he's a fuck boy kind of thing right um and so he has a problem with him but they do know each other and it is <laughs> i don't know this drama never really mentions or gives a reason why john gisop wants kim jinu to love him that is basically the whole goal of john gisop to kind of get kim jinu to accept that he loves him and to confess why no one knows i mean we see how john gisop falls in love with kim jinu but again it's not in the beginning in the beginning i don't know why he was pushing for it anyways um their hijinks are hilarious <laughs> because john gisop is a very hilarious human being uh i like how it's unpredictable i love how they had actually good chemistry which is rare i feel like for korean dramas i, I mean i shouldn't say it's, it's rare because i mean you have my dating sim love for love sake that are very good dramas with good like chemistry and everything but this drama also has that like they're kissing is amazing i feel like no one expected it to be amazing and it turned out to be fire right it turned out to be so good right so they have something going for them and you know they're cute they are very cute Jungi Sop is a lot. I don't know how Kim Jin is going to lose handle him, but they're cute, right? And you know, they're entertaining to watch. You also have going on in parallel to our two main leads, the story between Jino, 
played by An Semin, and Choi Pagum, played by Jung Yeojun, right? So these two also have a whole like romance going on. Yaz is one that like you, they have flashbacks to get us to understand that they used to have a thing, like a kind of not a real relationship. I would say I would say they had more of a, no. I think they had a real relationship, right? Uh, or they they kind of knew they had something, right? And for some reason, Chebagum kind of ditches Gino right and we kind of don't know why right and so when we first get introduced to the two characters it seems like they are very hostile to one another like especially Choi Bagum, right Choi Bagum is very hostile to Gino and Gino is just a puppy that like I liked Choi Bagum, right and you know it takes time to get us to understand what the reasons are right but at the beginning it's Choi Bagum just being mean right which is funny because the minute he stops being mean the minute he kind of accepts Gino back which is interesting because Gino never did anything to him to like warrant the like fight they had in the beginning anyways like it was all Choi Bagum, but like the minute he's like okay again that like Choi Bagum is okay again he becomes like a huge huge simp for this guy like he becomes so like you can tell he's so infatuated he's so infatuated that i would say this is even also the reason why he breaks up with gino both times right so he breaks up with him like in the flashback and also in the present time and like he does a lot he wants to do so much for gino because the truth is gino comes from like a wealthy background he's able to like get things easily and chabagum can be at this scrape to get out enough money to like buy popcorn right and buy a meal right and so they are from very different classes and for tribal gum he hates this this is embarrassing for him and i like the, the scene where he's trying to pay for food and he doesn't have enough money like i i felt bad for him in a deep way <laughs> that like i was like oh this is so bad like i, I felt really bad for him right you tell how much he did not want to show this part of himself to gino gino himself does not care like Gino could care less <laughs> um, but Jabagum somehow sees this as a flaw of his right so there are different places I would say in life at the moment right um because Jabagum just hasn't he hasn't made anything for himself right he still does part-time work he's still you know trying to you know get himself to the point where he needs to be right um and I feel like it's really sad because Gino doesn't care Gino you know just loves wants to be with Chebagum. So that that is the one that like I would say their story pains me the most. Um because I don't know, is there something about it that like you can tell like when you can tell a guy like likes another person or likes another guy and wants to give him everything but doesn't have anything to give. It's just sad and that's kind of how Chebagum is. Like he wants to give like like the scene where he basically goes to the wrong theater, right? And you know, Gino calls him and tells him the correct place and he's running and he spills all the popcorn but he's like really running really fast and like you know all that like i was like oh god he loves him so much like he really really wants to like impress him you know he just it's so sad right like he he really wishes it could be more for gino um so his self-esteem i think suffers when he you know gets that gift from gino right Gino again is somebody that is not able to see this which is which is okay right i mean because he's also just in love like they are both in love with one another but like (sighs) so sad like i it makes me want to cry but yeah that is the other couple that i i adore them so much and their story is it's more poignant it's more just angsty and ugh, i love it so much yeah but yeah that is the third drama i am watching uh boys be brave i love it so much um uh, and you know i only have like one episode left before i'm done i think one or two and so yeah i'm almost done with this drama it's very short anyway so yeah i highly, highly recommend it if you're not watching it you should then to the final and drum roll please like guys this is a big one <laughs> this is a massive one right the final drama and this is not a drama i'm watching actually it's a drama i will watch but i'm like like i want all the episodes to air or something before i start <laughs> because i know i don't want to be caught like just like waiting for new episodes right so yeah the last drama i'm gonna watch right is joy of life season two <sighs> Y'all already know. Or maybe you don't because like I maybe I don't talk about this often, but I feel like I have dropped hints here and there. Like I've I've dropped mentions of this drama here and there. Joy of Life is easily, easily, arguably my favorite Chinese drama. I, I say arguably because there are also other like amazing ones that I love so much, right? But you know, Joy of Life is just it's 
it's just like really really good it's one of the only like chinese dramas i have never skipped a sin because i mean chinese dramas uh, are pretty long right there's some scenes you have to skip because it just gets like too much it's a lot like it's it's just like so much right so that happens a lot with me for like chinese dramas because they're so long but like joy of life is easily one of the only dramas i have never skipped a scene and that's not to say it's perfect or anything but it's so good the plot is so so good that like i feel like a very few dramas can't compare jang Yoon is also easily one of my favorite actors not because i like him specifically but because he's in a lot of the dramas i like so joy of life and snow sword stride are two dramas that i always link together because they are very similar in a lot of ways right they have that like male lead that is intelligent clever right and carries himself well right also comes from kind of a prestigious background and so i i just i love jang Yoon because of that so much right joy of life was so good like the first season was so good and like i've been hearing like good things about the second season but again i wanted to hear all the episodes and then i'll watch it and i'm I'm just glad right that like most of the cast came back i hear like it's like at a 90 something percent like of the cast came back and makes sense because this is easily the biggest drama of 2024 like this is a drama that a lot of people were looking forward to so it makes sense that most of the cast would come back right it's torture like it's torture but like i don't want to have to wait for new episodes i just can't do it with this drama so like i'm just gonna wait i've been trying to avoid any edits on tiktok about this drama um i've blocked it and everything like i i am trying my best so yeah i just i look forward to watching this drama and for sure most likely i'm gonna cover it on this podcast because like it has to be covered right um i don't think i've even covered joy of life season one either so it might be like a double episode kind of thing where i talk about both of the dramas at the same time because then that will make sense because i think joy of life season two should wrap up the whole story is what i'm assuming um um, so i can talk about it more like in detail right um that, that episode is gonna be a long one <laughs> you can count on that what i'm doing right now is going back to watch like joy of life season one to kind of remind myself of like different like stories that's going on and everything because uh season two is about to be like fire right like i'm just uh, i'm so ready like 2024 has been great to me so far when it comes to like dramas i feel like like a lot of good dramas have come out in this sense but just halfway we're only midway through like ah uh, i am so happy i'm so excited for this drama and yeah that is all i have to say those are the four dramas that i am kind of like keeping my eye on and i think that if you've not watched any of them you should um but yeah that is it for this episode thank you guys so so much for listening to this episode and i will see you again next week have a lovely lovely day bye